This is the world's first mini gaming PC powered by the all new AMD Ryzen AI Max 395. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at Steam OS running on this machine. Well, more specifically, we've got Bazai OS installed because it does work with this chip. Unfortunately, official Steam OS just won't boot up on this yet. Maybe a few weeks from now, who knows, a few months. Definitely need some work over there. But what we've got here is the all new GMK Tech Evo X2. I've done one video on this. We took a look at Windows running on this machine and with that Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, I mean, this thing can game at 1440p without an issue, mainly because we've got the new Radeon 8060 Si GPU, which just happens to be the world's most powerful iGPU right now. If you're interested in seeing what this thing can do with Windows installed, I'll leave a link for that video in the description. It was more of a first look video. My full review will be coming, but I knew I had to test out some type of Linux on this machine. I would love to go with official Steam OS, but Bazite does have all the bells and whistles plus some, and it works on this thing perfectly fine. Like I mentioned, it's powered by the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. With this, we get 16 cores, 32 threads based on Zen 5, a base clock 3 gigahertz with a boost up to 5.1, 64 megabytes of L3 cache, and in this unit, 120 watts sustain, and a boost up to 140 watts. We've actually got a power mode button up front, and in SteamOS, it seems like we can go to a 35 watt, 65 watt, and 120 with that boost up to 140 just by pressing that button at any given time. In my opinion, best thing about this chip is the iGPU, the Radeon 8060S. It's based on RDNA 3.5, We've got 40 compute units here, and it clocks up to 2900 megahertz, two M.2 2280 slots internally, PCIe 4.0. You can do up to eight terabytes each, bringing it up to a total of 16 terabytes of storage with this. It's also got Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. Both of these are working in Baz iOS. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the operating system. I'm gonna plug into my game capture so we can get a better look at everything. So far, not bad at all. I mean, this thing has been trucking right along. I did try official Steam OS. We had to use Bazite here, but luckily, I mean, Bazite does have more features built in than official Steam OS right now. Uh, this newer driver does work with this Max Plus 395. I've got everything here that we do on the Steam Deck. And uh, for my performance overlay, you can see we've got 16 cores, 32 threads, so it takes up a lot of space. And with the power button on the front, we can get up to that 120 watts. In fact, we've got a boost up to 140. Uh, VRR, I guess with my game capture, it's not working right now. I can use HDR. Basically, everything we need here is ready to go with Bazai on this machine. And if we go into our system, moving down a bit, you can see we've got that AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 with the 8060S. 64 gigs dedicated to VRAM. This is the 128 gig model. So we've got 62 gigs over there on system memory. Plenty for both. When it comes down to it, I would probably just drop the VRAM down to 32 gigs. That's more than enough. And uh, we've also got access to a desktop if you wanted it. And this machine, you'd be able to do everything you wanted to on a desktop system. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into some gaming here. And we'll start out with Let's do Oblivion Remastered. I wasn't really sure how this game was going to perform on this chip in Linux, but it's not doing a bad job. We're at 1440p high. I took FSR to balanced, and usually I use XESS, but FSR is looking pretty decent here, even set it balanced. We're over 60, but it does get close to kind of dropping down. Either way, I could definitely play it like this and I actually wouldn't mind taking the settings down just a bit like a high medium mix at 1440 or take it to ultra 1080p and the game still looks great. And if you take a look up in the top left hand corner, we've got our performance metrics. We're anywhere from 80 watts up to 90 watts on this APU with this system and that's combined. That's the iGPU and the CPU. Again, this will do 120 watt sustain or a boost up to 140. Next up, Spider-Man 2, 1440p, very high with FSR set to balanced. I actually thought I might need to take this down to high settings. So very high here is the ultra setting for this game. It's doing a great job like it is. And we've had some recent updates from the developers. It's still not completely fixed. Uh, they kind of botched a few updates. 
But from those performance metrics, you can see that in some cases, this does pull over 120 watts in total. So it's really stressing out this APU at 1440. It's actually handling it just fine. I also wanted to check out Borderlands 3, 1440p ultra settings, not bad, but uh, there are some stutters every once in a while. On everything that I've been testing recently with those uh, shaders kind of loading in Steam, uh, while we're playing the game, we get a lot of stuttering. It's not as prevalent here on this uh, Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, but in some cases you can definitely see it when there's lots of particle effects on screen. I figured The Witcher 3 was going to run phenomenally on this chip, and yeah, at Ultra, with no FSR, no dynamic scaling, we're over 80 FPS on average with it. So uh, I know it's an older one. Uh, we've got a lot of updates, and we could get a lot more out of this by enabling FSR or even XESS with this chip. But I wanted to leave it native at 1440, and it's totally playable at Ultra settings. Shout out to the Tomb Raider, always like running this benchmark here, and I figured we'd get a little more out of this system. 1440, very high. I know for a fact that in Windows, we can actually get an average of around 130 FPS with the same settings. But as soon as this benchmark was over, I noticed a dramatic decrease going over to Steam, because we only got an average of 93 with the same settings here. Black Myth Wukong, 1440p, high, with FSR set to 60%, no frame generation with any of the games that we're testing here. This didn't do as good as I was hoping, and again, this is another one of those games that does perform better over in Windows. We got an average of 61 FPS. In Windows, this is up to around 78. I also wanted to throw in at least one fighting game. So we've got Street Fighter 6, 1440p ultra settings. So we're maxed out here and I knew this was gonna handle it just fine. We're at a continuous 60 FPS. And in Steam, I always have trouble trying to go up to 120 with this. For the most part, I'd play this at 60 just fine, but there are settings that will allow us to go to 120 in Windows. Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p Ultra with FSR Balance. Now this is kind of a switcheroo because this performs better in Linux on this chip. And for the most part, I've seen that on a lot of the Radeon iGPUs, we do see better performance over in Linux. So it's kind of strange, but CD Projekt Red did put a lot of time kind of optimizing for the Steam Deck itself. And it kind of shows here. And the final game we have here is Doom the Dark Ages, 1440p, high, XESS set to balance. And you notice I'm not using FSR here. I personally think that this does look better with XESS, and we might gain a few frames by using FSR instead. And we may need to actually adjust some of these settings because in a few cases, I did notice it go down to around 58 FPS. That's when there's lots of characters on screen. So a high medium mix with XESS set to balance that 1440 would be good to go on this setup. Personally, I think this APU would be all you need for a nice small form factor steam machine, but unfortunately the chip itself does cost quite a bit. And that's why we see these mini PCs and tablets like the ASUS ROG Flow Z13 cost so much. This Max Plus 395 isn't cheap from AMD and all of the mini PCs on the market that we've seen are anywhere from 13 to $2,000. There are a couple laptops and I think HP has kind of a workstation powered by this. Don't quote me on that, but it was originally announced. I don't know if they ever released it. And that thing's up to around $2,500 brand new. So I don't think we'd see a cheap steam machine using the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, but it would be really nice if AMD figured out how to bring the cost down. That way we could see some cheaper devices powered by this chip. They have a 32 gig model, 64 and a 128. Obviously, 32 is going to be the cheapest you could get, and that would be all you need for a machine like this. But either way, I wanted to check this out. If you're interested in seeing what this thing can do with Windows, I'll leave a link for that video in the description. And keep an eye out for my official review on the GMK Tech Evo X2. Should be coming in the next few days or so. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.